style of getting to the entrepreneur world started from. Okay. Yes. What mental space were you in? Like, let's go back to your upbringing. Uh, what was the environment like to trigger you to the space whereby you were not in a position to be thinking on the employment level, but on a level of you want to employ yourself? Mm, I actually can say I've come from the humble background. I'm a son of, from humble background in a Kisi community. Uh, in Bumachoge, that is the lowest community you can ever find in Kisi. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's downside the village. Mm -hmm. So, me have been raised in a village uh, life all the way to the time of university. So, when I actually, my first time to be in Nairobi is when I came for university. Mm -hmm. That's when I came to know the tall buildings in Nairobi and everything. And then from there, I've been raised as a single uh, parent from the single parent community. That where my father cannot be able to afford to bring us the table to the meal, the uh, meal to the table. So that's why I really actually struggled much to work very hard. You can imagine an extent that you guys can be able to stay even without a meal in a night. So this triggered me to study very hard because I knew without working very hard, I cannot make it to this world. So that's why I had to do an extra mile of working very hard. And then God is on, our, our, uh, was on my side. Then I made it to campus. So that is why actually now my journey of success started from there. Okay. How yes. many businesses have you opened that failed? Oh, many. <laughs> Actually, I've done seven businesses and failed. Mm -hmm. Seven businesses. Mm -hmm. I have operated a kiosk. Mm -hmm. I was used to sell a kibanda, ya matunda, nyanya, izo zote. Mm -hmm. So I was in a student in KCA. So when I'm not having classes, I used to go to, ge to get the rye, get fruits, come to sell. And I used to sell them in Hunters. Those mm -hmm. people know Kasarani Hunters Road, wana nijua vizuri. Number two, I used to sell miwa. Mm -hmm. I have done it several times. Mm -hmm. So that's even sometimes when I pass there, those guys very much motivated whenever they see me moving their car on that area. Consider you're coming from Kisi. Like. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. So we have to sell Miwa. So yes. I've done that was second business. Uh -huh. And actually, Miwa wasn't that bad. People can see those people sell Miwa, ni akomba wana pesa. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you at the end of the day, you go with around 3,000 3, shillings profit. So you can imagine in a week, it's around mm -hmm. 20,000. Mm -hmm. Which in other business uh, employment, in a month you can never get that kind of amount. But people think it's a very dirty work. Mm -hmm. But those guys, I congratulate them so much because of doing the good work. And what would you say on that mentality space whereby people look at the Joakali sector in a very negative way at the fact that I go to school, I have papers, and so I have to stick to the lane of just the white collar jobs? Mm, that is actually, basically, like for myself, mm -hmm. I have tried as much as possible to encourage people to embroil themselves. Mm -hmm. When you embroil yourself, you have a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of space. You can work on improve. But when you embroil to somebody else, you are stick to that. As you are secretary working in my office, he sticks to the secretary work in the office. She can't move anything else apart from that. Mm -hmm. But when you're embroiled on yourself, you can try to think of what, I imagine me opening a kiosk here. Mm -hmm. Outside there, there's opportunity for me selling miwa. Mm -hmm. At the same time, outside there, I can do githeri. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine in your area of working mm -hmm. as a kiosk, okay? mm -hmm. you see this is a shop of kiosk here. Mm -hmm. You can do the three to four things at the same time than doing outside there. So that's mm -hmm. what I can say, Juakari sector to myself is what has made me to become a millionaire at this kind of an age. Right. Yes. And uh, so, so far to Kokoa Miwa, so how many are there remaining? I think around Kuna three, Miwa, six, yes. I've also sold clothes. I've uh -huh. sold ladies' clothes. Oh, okay. Yes, I used to sell uh, jackets for ladies' blazers. All right. sana, pia, alafu ikakuje kachomeka, biashara. I used to work with a partner of mine, to kakazi kakua zimeakuka. The last business I did, then it failed. We opened, uh, I opened, I uh, opened to get a friend of mine, to a uh, shop up on Dingara Street, mm -hmm. Yakuza Mangu. Then I injected my capital in, and I'll be talking about the, uh, the angel. Uh, oh, investor. Part, yes, yes, yes talk about that. So somebody shared an idea to me, then I invested in a business. So only to discover that uh, my friend, after for some time, like I can say, he conned, she conned me. Mm -hmm. because it was not picking, because the first time it was doing well, but after this, the following months, the books of audit are not doing good, because you see, for me, I was constructing another place, then I invested in another business. So I came to discover that there is a way that uh, if you don't take part of your business, day-to-day -day running, you get conned, and then you get a uh, losing because you'll be told these losses every time, mm -hmm. and the expenses are going very high. So, so that's involved. why I lost that business also. So you have to be really involved. In yes, that. so actually, that's I, you see, every business I've done, mm -hmm. it gives me a lesson to learn. Yes, that mm. it needs a lot of commitment for you to do a business. Okay. Currently, how many businesses are you running? Uh, so far, I am uh, running five companies. Oh, okay. speaking about running five companies, I don't want to get into all of them in details. But I would like to get the mentality of uh, the fear of the unknown. 
when you're venturing into something which you have, of course, we don't always know what will happen tomorrow or f few years down the line when it comes to business and also life in general. But let's look at a business. How do you overcome the fear of the unknown when starting off a new journey in like a new business? I do say business is a risk. Business is a risk. You have to work on the risk. Actually, like if today Y254 started and without knowing that maybe you, tomorrow it's not going to fail, it was not to be here today. So you have to start something knowing that there might be risk. Of course, in everything you do, there is a positive and there is a negative. Mm -hmm. But now the positive should outlook the negative. Get my point? Mm -hmm. And again, you are starting a business not about tomorrow. You, no, no, not about today, present. You are looking about tomorrow. Such so that even if you not be there, your children mm -hmm. or other people can inherit the same businesses. Mm -hmm. So I do say to my side, I we start businesses uh, knowing there is a risk uh, ahead, but we try to maneuver and struggle with it to the end. Right, and it's, it's on that note that we get into the topic of conversation, which is executing a successful uh, business private. So we know business can grow beyond the initial dreams by reimagining their, their asset talents, thinking more broadly about their customer problems, and then they get to solve them and change in the direction of the company, going back to the drawing board. So starting us off, uh, uh, Mr. Samuel, uh, when we talk on, of uh, executing a successful uh, uh, business private, what does that actually mean? Uh, thank you very much, Michelle, once again. I would like our viewers to understand, first of all, business pivot, what does it mean? Yes. I remember when I was in uh, the lower level of education, where I told something about a pivot. What is a pivot? Something that changes the direction. Getting my point? Yes. So if people can be able to understand actually the business pivot, especially what it means, and actually even the discussion of today becomes of easy for them to understand, because a pivot is something that changes the direction. Mm -hmm. Like you hold it this way, so if you put something here, assume this cut here, mm -hmm. so it can be able to change the direction. It can go this way, it can go that way. Yes. So basically when you talk about business now, business pivot is basically changing the environment. You get my point? Like the direction in which a business is taking. This one, especially when it's discovered that the business, uh, the product and service is not meeting the market, uh, is not meeting the market standard. Mm -hmm. Like it's losing already. Mm -hmm. So you have to use what you call a pivot to mm -hmm. change the direction, to change the environment. So basically, it all means about changing the direction of a business, especially the product, uh, the product or the service is not meeting the market standard. Mm -hmm. And mostly the, uh, the business pivot is done to improve the sales, also to improve the revenue of the company. Mm -hmm. yes. And would you say it's a complete transformation uh, when it comes to the model of the business model? Yes, mm -hmm. basically yes, it is. Complete change. Mm. Because you see, once you are able to understand that my business is not doing well, you have to introduce now the business models inside to yourself, that which can be able to help you to make it now complete. Now it now transforms from where it was starting to its uh, its ending. All right. So, and when it, as a business owner, when you actually realize that your products and also when it comes to your services, they have failed like to achieve whatever you, you your team had uh, sat down had come up with whatever your target goals are going, you, you guys are going for. So, would you like say that all hope is lost? No. Why? When assume you have started a product today, you want to sell mm -hmm. water to the people. After, after the, uh, introducing the water to the people, it is not well received by the clients outside there, by the market outside there. You need to understand what, where have you failed. Because you cannot say that all is, no, all is already lost there. You need to change. You see that's the thing about pivot uh, business. You need to change the tactic. Mm -hmm. If it's the research that you have done, you can change the way you did that market research. If it's about marketing, you can change the marketing strategies. If it's about management, you can change. So I can say, I cannot say that uh, once like uh, the business has lost direction, the hope is lost. No, you can still work on it and change what was not done. If it was done in half way, do it fully. They can be able to give you the results. Okay. Yes. How important is it to not always be involved in all sectors? And I believe we have leaders who feel like if I'm running a, in a situation, probably like five companies, that I have to be involved in everything. And it's just like, uh, how do you call it? The, the way you can just be on the lookout on every of your employee. You just you want to be involved in everything. How important is it to just delegate? I can say business actually, as we said in the beginning, is about dedication. But as far as possible, you cannot be everywhere at the same time. Now, me in the studio, 
business is still over, is already open there. Eh? Operations are running from time to time. So once you're able, you see, if you have a, tra a, a, a team that is very much supportive, eh? so this one is able to make your businesses go through. Because you have a team which you encourage them, you train them, and have, you see, if you have the right team, mm -hmm. it makes your work easier. Mm -hmm. Because they are already well trained, they know what they're supposed to do from time to time, so your work is to guide. I actually advise many young entrepreneurs, many young people in management area, because I'm also doing in corporate governance, eh? mm -hmm. so I'm able to give a lot of uh, skills in terms of management. Eh? Don't be over around because you get exhausted very fast. You get that very fast. Delegate the work to people. Let people understand that this work can be done when you're not there. So for you, as a leader, you, what you do is just, as a, actually you become a team leader, is to guide. Mm -hmm. When you guide them, they're able to do it. Mm -hmm. What yes. sort of emotional intelligence does one have to be to be in that particular lane of mindset? Because I feel like, at the end of the day, you feel like this is your baby. You, you know, you, it is all <laughs> your idea, your vision, yes. and you're, you're giving out to someone else to just handle it. So at what particular point, when, when it comes to emotional intelligence, just handle that emotional intelligence, uncle. Uh, like, you want to be involved in everything? Yes in the terms of just looking at the psychological part of it, oh. the mindset. You see, that's why I said from the beginning, mm -hmm. I'm an empowerment person. Mm. I need to empower many people. Mm -hmm. Why? The future of tomorrow is looking about how many people have been empowered. So if you empower people are enough, you don't need to be having an emotional mind that this business is going to fail when you're not there. So if you have empowered people at the right time, at the right stage, so this makes it easier for you, you can be able to give them the work, they can be able to do it without having an emotional saying that these guys... You see, there's much of the risk behind. Because I've been told in a point of an extent, even this, sometimes I do some quotes today, at however much you're very hard working, your boss gets you when you're already <laughs> relaxing. <laughs> So this one basically actually <laughs> makes me to understand. Uh -huh. uh, try to, uh, I try to remove such kind of that quote for me mm -hmm. and say that give people space. You see, once you give people space, they're able to deliver. And this one removes now your emotion. I know at some point you feel, actually, let me say, like as a boss, you want to feel like you want to be involved in everything. I want to be involved in construction. I want to be involved in real estate. I want to be involved in a building of those houses. I want to be in building of, of the, the, the retail business I'm doing. But if I can be able to give it to the people, Mm -hmm. who have already embarked and doing nicely to my emotional side becomes like i'll be like just off just to be looking around and see what is happening around. all right and it's yes. on that note that i would like to find out the like what are the what are the ways to maintain stamina to keep going even even if the time is tough yes uh basically i can say every business is tough let me say that no business that is easier i can tell you ask about people me i've lost this is a time i lost like 7.5 million when I was importing cargo. <laughs> how, did you, how did you survive that? <laughs> okay, let me see. I was, um, part I was doing some trade industry, uh, retail of uh, selling printing papers. Okay. Uh, those people who know me, they know me from Samayu Limited. I used to have a company in Samayu Limited. My office is in Modega Square, ground mm -hmm. floor room number eight. Mm -hmm. So I used to sell machines and also selling our uh, printing papers. Then, so my first reign of business is for selling the printing machines. Okay. The printers, the copiers, the, and also the banner machines. Actually, even many people today, they know me mm -hmm. as a machine retail mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. So after doing that business like for a year, then I came to discover there's another opportunity in selling printing papers. I did my research very fast. Actually, I did a research. I also did a business plan. Mm -hmm. And then I take it to one of my investors who take the business and then pump in the business money to that business. Then we bought the cargo. You can imagine we bought the cargo from China. It was around the uh, middle of the COVID time, 2020. Then after importing that cargo, you can imagine... Uh, we, got, we were served by all the documents, including the government of Kenya documents of clearing the documents. Mm -hmm. Those, if you know those uh, customs clearance documents, everything with caps and everything that showing that our product is okay in, this, in, the, in, the, in the port coming to Kenya here. And it was, basically it was taking around two, no, four weeks for the cargo to arrive in Kenya here. Mm -hmm. The customers are waiting for that product. I can tell you in Kenya, paper business is very hot cake. Very, very much hot cake because we don't produce paper in our own. So if we are able to import it from uh, the other country, give you at a better rate so we're able to sell. So I was very much uh, of ambitious of that business and then I invested in that business. Only to discover by the time the cow is arriving in the port, mm -hmm. it was only an empty container. Oh my goodness. An empty container of 7.5 million. Wow. Two of them, no, actually do not want two of them. Is a pure record, I think, those who have found, have already discussed in some way on my social media mm -hmm. before, how I did that piece in the field. Mm -hmm. So basically I can say, 
that are business to lose, nothing that is easy. And were you able to take legal action? On that? I did it actually, even we launched a case as we speak in China. Mm -hmm. There's a case which is proceeding in China. Because you see what happens, they tell us that once the cargo has arrived here, there was no container inside. So we involved the DCI, we involved the securities of the port. Now the case started to follow where the container may have been, the cargo would have been lost. Up to date we speak, no justice has been found. There's still the case in China, I'm being told the hearing is the next year. So you can imagine. Wow. From last year to next year. How do you keep sane after that level of experience? Or this is just one of the experiences. Yes. This is just one of them. Yeah. So how do you how do you stay sane and still keep going? You see now, actually after that business was lost, my, my hope was like almost gone. Until I came to restructure myself again and do another business. Actually, that is why the first time after now that you see all the money, actually, it left us with nothing because all the amount that we had, we invested in that business. So we were remaining with nothing. And most of the money was from the bank loans. You can imagine. You have oh borrowed goodness. money, injected, it was already gone. Mm -hmm. So we had to rest, I had to restructure again with my team. We sat down and said, this cannot be the end of life. You see, there's something we do say, life has to continue. You have failed. You have lost everything, but the beauty is about life has to continue. Mm -hmm. So that is why now we invested now again in the construction industry. So I did a partnership with our friends of mine in the construction industry. Then we formed a company of construction. Then we started now applying for works of construction. Oh my goodness. Uh, wow. It takes a lot of resilience and uh, patience to yeah, just yeah. come back to the scene of, you know, different business as well from that space of mindset and it's from that I would like to find out uh, you deal with lots of clientele and when it comes to business pivoting that is a very crucial point of view because that is where you make your sales how important is it to acquire feedback from your uh, retained clientele and also potential clients thank you very much Michelle once again I do say in every business you do uh, clients and customers become the key. They are the ones to tell you if they are willing to consume your product or not. And I do say, actually like to us as a company, customer becomes our priority. Mm -hmm. So the voice of a customer, it tells you how much the product is moving outside here. If you hear, actually if you sell a product and you get these low sales, basically there might be a thing, either customers are not receiving that product well. Number two, they may have not have enough information about that product. Because, you see, customer, I do say, is a funny person. At the same time, is a good person. Because the customer can tell you either they are willing to take the product or they are not willing to take the product. If you get a negative uh, feedback from a customer, this means at some point they might be offended. They, are, they, are made, they have been offended either by your price, mm -hmm. by the quality, by the quantity of it itself, by the packaging. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Mm -hmm. So the customer feedback is always the key. It can tell you why you need to do some adjustments. It can be either the branding of that product is not well received by the customers. Mm, customer so as, yes, well. yes. So as a management, you need to work on that branding. Mm -hmm. It can be above the price. It can be higher than the other customers, uh, the, the other retailers are doing what? Selling. So the voice of a customer and the feedback can help the management in basically in making a decision. It can be about the quantity, the quality of the product itself, or even the service, actually. I, you see, when people mention, most of the people talk about the, uh, the product and talk about the service, okay. even the service itself. When you get a client telling you, this, I was not well served in the office. So as a management, you need to struggle and work hard and, and see where was the challenge. Mm -hmm. That's why most of the, uh, most of the uh, companies and corporations insist much as possible to get the customer feedback uh, from the customers. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the ways to like, pivot your business? Sorry? What are a couple of ways that one can uh, put, like in terms of a running a business, mm. uh, that can help in pivoting their mm -hmm. business to another level? Uh, thank you very much, Michelle. Uh, for it actually already mentioned to before. Mm. For uh, 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 you can basically you can put it in this way: how mm. to pay for your business. Ab absolutely. Good. Number one is to engage the customers. Mm -hmm. Number two is to do the market research. Mm -hmm. Do the market research. It doesn't have to do a market research. So when you do a market research, you try to know what are these people doing, mm -hmm. what are they wanting, mm -hmm. what is being received outside there. You can also do about also focusing also on your competences. Mm -hmm. If a company is good in this and this, it should focus on that. But uh, the one I mentioned earlier about improving uh, customer mm -hmm. is very, very, very much key to an organization and also 
communicate the changes. I do say this thing from time to time. If you have something in your business and you want to do something, always communicate it to customer. Because customers should not wake up in the morning and they found you've already moved to another place. If mm -hmm. you want to move, assume you're working in this area and you want to move to Westlands, basically alert your customers that you'll be moving. The customers will always have confidence in you. Like in this way, try as much as po possible to engage your customers. It's called about uh, communicating uh, about the changes to customers. Tell them you'll be moving from here to the other place. If it's about the price change, give people time to uh, adjust. Mm. Tell them that from next week we shall be having an offer of this amount. Try to get those responses. Then by the time of action, by next week, the customers are well informed about so this So you thing. prepare them prior. Yes. So we've looked at how to pivot your business. So let's look at uh, at what particular point do you look at the situation in your business and you actually realize, by the way, it's time for me to make changes because mm. most people just run businesses and they they don't realize that it's time to, lay, uh, to take a laid back seat and just review the whole thing. At what particular point do you say and see the signs that it's actually time for change? Uh, basically, number one is about we said how the sales are moving. Sales, number sales one. Sales gives you everything. It's about a revenue mm -hmm. and also the quantity. Mm -hmm. So assume this week uh, you have been selling like 9,000 tons. The following week you are selling 2,000 tons. Immediately clicks to your mind something is going wrong. Mm -hmm. So basically about the growth, the actual, let me say about is about like a growth. A growth in sales can tell you the company is in the right direction. The slow of the growth of the, of the sales can tell you there's something that is behind, that needs to be worked on. So at any given point, like when you're making losses, basically can be able to tell you that there's something that needs to be paid for, the business needs to be paid for. It. Number two, when, you, when you're getting a negative feedback mm. from the customers, this tells you that you need to pay for it on your business. Basically, measure about the sales mm -hmm. and revenue and also the customer feedback. Competition, actually, actually even when you, when you also face about stiff competition. Actually, inside there, in like in us corporates, eh, we do say about this a corporate rivalry. Mm -hmm. So if you find there is a corporate rivalry, you need to come back again and see where you need to do changes, adjustments in your business to make it better. All right. Um, for when it comes to still on clientele uh, angle, when it comes to you changing or modifying prices for either products or anyone who's running a service kind of a business, how do you change that without losing your clients, the retained clientele? Mm. What sort of modification or how can you just uh, maneuver around that? Uh, sorry, come on, on, once again. I'm saying when it comes to anyone who is running, probably you, you sell products or services and you realize that the point of change that has to be made is on the price area. And you know that is a very <laughs> crucial point because yes. if I'm a regular client of your services and I come back and I realize that you've changed the prices and, you know, I will... I will, of course, I think of other ways, maybe competition, but how can you modify prices in a way that you'll also retain clientele? What is the strategy behind that? Uh, thank you very much. That's actually is, is a basic on how to work on through the market. Mm. Number one, as, let me use, I actually like using an example. Mm. Maybe I might be a teacher very soon. <laughs> <laughs> so assume uh, you have been having a regular customers coming to buy bread mm -hmm. and I've been selling bread at 50 shillings. Mm -hmm. There are some factors which make the bread to go high. Number one can be the cost of production. Mm -hmm. We see there are some external and internal factors. Some external factors, those are beyond your control. You see, me as a, as a, as a seller, uh, let, me say as a, uh, let me say me as a business, eh? we are selling uh, bread. Eh? And then he came to discover tomorrow, there are some factors which have made the price of bread to go high. You see, the customer doesn't know doesn't actually even understand those factors. But me, as a person who's involved in selling these things, I'm able to know. Because assuming this way, uh, that the cost, of, uh, the cost of fuel has gone high, so means the production is going to be what? Very high. Mm -hmm. So when the cost is going very high for manufacturing, it's going to affect the people who buy from them. So as when you come to sell, to the business, to the people now, also therefore the company is not selling to the people, so you discover that already the price has gone what? High. The best thing you can ever do, Number one, as I said in the early beginning, inform the customer in the change. When the customer is coming to buy, talk to the customer nicely and tell him, sorry, because we have been selling the bread at 50 shillings, but now it's going for 55 because of A, B, C, and D. The customer is going to make an informed decision. Don't sell to him the bread before you inform him. Actually, if the milk has been retailing, I know, understand, currently the bread is around 55 shillings. Eh? Mm -hmm. Let me talk about to our reach, like on my operations of what we do, let me talk about... Uh, the issue about the lands. 
because you get the land always appreciates from time to time. Now, when you are selling the property, like currently we have the properties that I'm selling in Uruiru, the, the value is around 800,000 currently. So by tomorrow, you get some factors have made the price to go, and the, the area has gone very high. The stamp duties are already go, charging going very high for doing those exchanges. Mm -hmm. You get also the... Um, League of East that we, which were charged already being revised because they also the factors which are incorporated in a in a setting of the property so uh, also there. So when a client is coming to buy a property from us, we tell him period that sorry because we have been selling the product at eight hundred thousand, but now because of these factors and also introducing something also because it can be actually you can also do branding to make your price also to go very very high not not very high but a little bit higher. Let me say the change of that price. Okay. So you inform the customer that our price has changed from A to B because of so. So this one is able the customer is going to make an informed decision because some actually some other people want to. In, you inform them, they'll be very okay. But without informing them, this client might think you want to take money from him. So he's going to go to another place and try to look for the other oh, best alternative. Yeah, so you feel yes. like you're trying to take advantage. Yes. The... Like the time of COVID, yeah? You get some, somebody selling your mask at 50 shillings. <laughs> You get my point. <laughs> Currently now, if you go to the streets and sell for me market, uh, uh, you sell for me a uh, mask at 50 shillings, I, I cannot buy, buy. I can buy as well. Nishiko <laughs> <laughs> But you buy a mask. So, Thank you very uh, much. When it comes to any startup of mm. business and everything, and uh, they're, they're looking for an angel investor, tell us who is an angel investor and how we can find one. Uh, thank you very much. An angel investor, let me say, is actually, let me say, is any individual, any person that is willing to put his money to a startup company. Mm -hmm. And in return of that person is also expecting something. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. can be a debt. Also, equity capital. Mm -hmm. Yes, equity. Mm -hmm. Because you see, if I invest your money today, assume today, because we have said basically one thing, people need to understand. In before earlier times, people used to know angel capital, uh, uh, no, angel Invest individuals, yeah. investors, mm -hmm. are the white people. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Mm -hmm. But in the current market where we are today, angel uh, investor can be anybody, any individual that is willing to give his capital for the start of a mm -hmm. business. And then when is the right time to seek for, uh, for an investor? Uh, there's something I've not answered you. Okay. Uh, where can you get this? Uh, oh, where yes. can you get where the, can you angel, get the investors? angel investor? Oh, so thank you very much. Short, it's a very yeah. good question, actually. Yes. You can get them many places. Number one, in angel forums. Because these angel investors, they are forums. Mm. Summits. These people go for summits. You can go there, identify one person. Number three, in church. Mm. At your congregation where you go and worship, like us why we worship in church, I'm we have some many you. business people there. And people don't even realize <laughs> They don't that. realize. You just go to church, you think you're going to You think to you're going church. to worship, pray and go and home. you don't network no, it's don't a network platform as well. Yes. So the more you network with people outside there, even in church, in schools, in any other marketplaces and any other forums where people are congregating, you are having a right repository of getting an age of business. Also, you can also meet them. You know, I've said about summits, forums, angel businesses, are also church markets, and also family and uh, family members. You can imagine your family and your members. Mm. You can imagine your family, you can have some people are wealthy. Right? Mm. Your uncle is wealthy, <laughs> and he does not need to invest. So <laughs> you can introduce that to him. So even in family setup, you are able to get an angel investor, investor. to invest in a business. You mentioned an uncle, and I remember <laughs> those uncles who told us to send CVs. Oh, uh, they're still working on them. <laughs> they're still working on them. <laughs> and they're, still still, they're still looking on them, so they still respond. Yeah, they will give you feedback. Yes. So when is the right time to seek for an investor? The right time to seek an investor? Yes. Any time is the right time. Mm -hmm. Why? Once we identify a gap, business gap you are likely to have an investor like let me say for myself basically those people who know me uh i was telling people i became a millionaire at the age of 21 years old ah uh, repeat that again <laughs> <laughs> we need to sit okay we need to sit at the edge and listen to that uh -huh. i became a millionaire at the age of 21 years old how number one uh when i was in campus eh? actually i was already a millionaire by the time i was finishing campus at the age of 21 years old. By saying a millionaire, because I feel like also Kenyans, when you have one million, you will be called a millionaire. So what does a millionaire, in the context of being a millionaire here? The context remains in this thing. Number one <laughs> is about the assets. Okay. Assets are already required. All right. And also the liquid cash you have. Okay. Yes, so don't ask me to mention oh, about so the assets. Okay, yeah, assets. I know Kiara That's will be a story of another day. <laughs> I know Kiara yes. So basically, I can say <laughs> that uh, it is possible because uh, in a way mm -hmm. of uh, structuring yourself mm -hmm. by that time makes you to be the same. Mm -hmm. So there's something basically you're asking me, I wanted to answer it. So I don't know if I can sit down or later on. 
You can answer uh, what was it all about? Because you know, like when you, you mentioned the you were a millionaire at a very young age, so you threw me, you threw us off, Kidogo. But yes, <laughs> we were talking about uh, the right time to seek an investor. An investor. Yes, now yes. I was giving my own example. Exactly. It's easier to use my own example than use the other people's example. Absolutely. So what is happening basically is here. Uh, when I was in Kambase, I discovered there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. When we used, I used to attend many of the business forums, many of the business trainings. Mm -hmm. Then I was told, if you have a good plan, mm -hmm. somebody is able to buy it. Yes. There is a lot of people outside there who have money. They don't have what they can, where they can be able to invest. Mm -hmm. They have money, but they have no idea of how they can use it. Mm -hmm. So you basically outside there, you can have a plan. Like for myself, I had a plan of selling printers, copiers, machines, and importing them. And you understand in Kenya, you can, for you to import those things, you need a lot of money. So I did a business plan. And then I took it to one of my investors, one of my team that I knew was looking for people, but did not have a, an idea what he can be able to invest into. So I did a business plan. Mm -hmm. Then I took it to him. Then I did that presentation to him. I told him, I can be able to manage this business. I can help you to get the market. Actually, even I was showing him the markets. Like for copiers and printers, I was showing him, we can sell to schools, we can sell to printing industry, we can also sell to individuals working from home. So I used that as an opportunity. I developed a business plan. Then I took it to an investor. An investor by my idea gave me the capital. We invested, we formed a company, we do we did that business of doing what? Selling the printers. So the first thing once to identify the gap in any market, I can trust even me here today as mm -hmm. I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. Michelle, you tell me this is a business here. And I'd look into myself, it's workable. I can invest. Mm -hmm. So I'm also also a potential investor to invest. Okay. Yes. Now we know. Now we know. <laughs> so how to keep on top of new development from your competitors? Because every industry we have competition. It's about strategy. Strategy is the key. Competition strategy. Do your research. You see, you are able to see what is the other person is outshining you. If it's, if it's outshining you in advertising, eh, go beyond the advertising mechanism he's using. If this guy, if the company uh, part B is outshining you because of branding, you also need to work on unique features to make your product unique than other thing. Let me, I like using examples of myself and what I do. Basically, like in our properties, when we sell our properties, eh, some people can sell you properties that which have no value additions. On my side, as a real estate and also a developer, we come up with all our projects, we service them. Mm -hmm. We do value additions to them. If the other people are selling like low rent, I can come over an extra mile of giving clients eh, a, 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 a product, oh no, no, let me say a, a plot, mm -hmm. a property, mm -hmm. which is serviced with like internal roads, marams, well sewage connections, uh, uh, solar street lights inside, planting trees, beautiful flowers, beautiful gates. So this makes you to be top of the other competitor, mm -hmm. makes you top from the other person. So it's all about seeing what they're not, being different. Exactly. Yeah, that's being unique. Yeah, Let being me say unique. being unique. Yeah, you being see, unique. if you become unique, actually, I tell people, and this is a secret, people need to understand in every business, have a reason why somebody cannot uh, take away your job. You getting my point? Even the employees who are listening to me outside there, anybody that is in, in any form of employment, somewhere. understand this thing. Let your boss have a reason of why not taking your work from you. The boss is trying to fire you tomorrow. Is like, why can I get in such kind of a person tomorrow? Michelle, as you're hosting a show today, you need to have a reason why your management can be able to having you here today. Even if they tell me you're getting old, they can still ask you, Michelle, we need you back in the studio. Why? Because they need to know your service or what you're doing is different from any other person that is doing outside there. All right. And you can agree with me throughout this conversation, it has been point clean clear that client are the major key here yeah in very very when major it key. comes to returns yes. and saves of course so ways to offer exceptional customer service sorry ways to offer exceptional customer service to your clientele and number one valuing the customer much number two getting the feedback the feedback once you get the feedback you have already valued this customer because they you see actually let me tell you something if you have not known in this market customers need to be had the voice of a customer is very key to a cooperation. It's very key to any sector. So if you are able to understand your customer, I can tell you the customers will value because everybody, even you today, mm -hmm. you need to stay where you are being valued. Mm -hmm. Where you raise your voice, you are able to be heard by the management. So wherever you go and you are able to value your, your clients, your customers, this can basically tell you that you are willing to be part of them. You see, a customer needs to be a part of something. 
Even today, even in a family setup, you need to be somebody you need to be valued, somebody who values you, somebody who sees your potential, your capacity and everything. So if you're able to value a client, you're able to value a customer. So this means they'll be getting, like they'll be part and parcel of that thing. Mm. So they'll be always get valued and be able to work with you. Well, Bona Samuel, we're in the New Year's uh, spirit and everyone out here has resolutions and everything. Do you have any? Results for this year. Yeah. Oh, yes, many of them. <laughs> Are you one of those people who carry forward or uh, the ones that you didn't achieve, they went with 2021 or they're just being carried forward? Uh, to myself, I say sometimes I carry. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, I've, I'm in a real estate industry and also in many uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. So there's something that you never do uh, right in last year. I have to try as much as possible to do it in this year. Mm -hmm. Why? I told you this, a customer mind. There's something which customer realized that we never did it last year. Good. So if I if I keep it 2021 and I assume this 2022, that customer is still there. Mm. You get my point? I also need to bring that customer from 2021 to 2022. Mm. So I have to try as much as possible to analyze where did I go wrong? Where did I not do right in that time? Mm. So this basically will keep me moving from time to time. Like my year, this new year 2022 resolutions, I have many of them. I don't, uh, can you allow me to share with them? With Maybe top university? three. Top three. Top three. Number one is to settle many people <laughs> <laughs> in Kenya to have their own plots in Kenya. Okay. Like to have their own homes. Actually, that is my dream. And actually, by the way, let me tell you, um, this week I'm on fasting. Eh? Mm -mm. I'm on fasting for seven days fasting. I thought when people are fasting, they're not supposed to say Bonan Samuel. They are supposed to? To keep it to yourself. Or, or is this oh. not a, a spiritual uh, no, no, fasting? No, 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 no. I have uh, even encouraging my clients outside there, <laughs> even my people outside there, to join me <laughs> as we fast for the year 2022. Okay. Because there are some things we never did right in 2021. Yeah. So we are asking God, intervention from God, to help us achieve it in 2022. So I'm on a fasting of seven mm -hmm. days, and I'm also praying that God to give me favor to set up many people as possible mm -hmm. to their own homes okay. in 2022. Like now, currently, I have a very beautiful estate in heaven, Gardens Ruiru, East. Mm. So people can come there and they settle there by giving them those proper properties on a, on a affordable prices, which they can be able to settle. So actually, my resolution in 2022 is to have at least, if possible, even if it's 200 people, settling in that area. Uh, two. Number two, mm -hmm. also reaching to the community. Mm -hmm. It's also my dream, mm -hmm. resolution. Mm -hmm. like this year, which has passed, I have done some. But there's a lot of each, like if, actually every day I wake up to, to see on my social media, on my WhatsApp, my, on my social media platforms, I get a lot of people help, looking help from me. I get a lot of people looking employment from me. So my dream is also this year resolution. At least go to help me to touch many people. Hearts. Mm. Yes. And the last one. The last one. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Family. <laughs> Family, yes. It's very crucial. Yes. It's, the, it's the center of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at financial management, especially during this time. People are very excited. This is New Year. People have great plans, and that is amazing. So what are a couple of financial management uh, lessons that you've learned along the way when it comes to you running a different kind of businesses? Uh, thank you very much, Michelle. I can basically say financial management is the key in every organization. Budget costing, budget mm -hmm. is the key for every organization. Uh, for you to succeed, you need to do what you call priority. Mm -hmm. Have what gives, like just give a priority to whatever that is supposed to be done. If you just throw your expenses everywhere, you will find yourself you're learning out of cash. You're learning out of money to run a company run your businesses. So basically, I can advise uh, entrepreneurs outside there. Number one, on financial management is very key. They need to do much of the budgeting. Let them budget. You see, you cannot budget of what you don't have. You try to budget on upon terms of what you have currently. Mm -hmm. Number two, as I said, about your priorities, eh, try to find out which can be sorted first. What can you settle first? The other one comes out later on because you are able to budget about your expenses then this can be able to help you to achieve your revenue or the targeted results. So basically, financial management is very, very, very much key for every organization. You can have it in terms of how you're doing your costing, how you do your, uh, you, your expenses, how you do everything. Eh? But basically, the main, main, main key is about how you're handling your costs, you're handling your expenditures, you're handling like, let me say about, because nothing can run without money in this economy. So you have to budget everything to meet the demand of what to, to get. Oh, 
are what are the books what are what are the books that you have read that has been of great impact to you and also who is your mentor uh let me say i have a lot of mentors mm -hmm. number one I, uh, let me say to my boss mr hansam zu mm -hmm. is the director also in charge of china uh, china we mm -hmm. is my big big mentor he mentors me especially in charge uh, in terms of businesses and also not forgetting in real estate mm -hmm. i've been mentored by george washiori mm -hmm. he's a good good mentor to me mm -hmm. and uh, actually let me say i have learned a lot of skills from him he takes time to listen to me whenever i make a phone call to him he said to help me as much as possible mm -hmm. so i can say today george washiori and his book he has written a book mm -hmm. egos soaring like an ego mm -hmm. have read that book much and wherever he is this morning i don't know if you can be able to hear me but i george washiori Thank you very much and I greatly value you much and also many other friends mm -hmm. who helped me to mentor me much. And also uh the somebody also say there's a very nice book I do read when I'm free The Poor Dad and the Rich Dad. Mm. Oh, you read about it? Finances, yes. I yes, have. so this one actually I can tell you about even those the employers or uh, the the team that is outside there. Mm -hmm. I can tell them that when they have time let them read that book it's called the poor dad and the rich dad mm -hmm. it's helping you to make a decision how you want to do your business and how you also to run it and I'm not forgetting mr james proti <laughs> 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 he's a good friend of mine uh -huh. i don't know if he's watching this morning uh -huh. he also encourages me on how ways of make actually we take time to share together you see and i can tell people always get associated with people who add value to you mm -hmm. actually this year we said to kona makazi we have scissors mm -hmm. so anybody that is what cutting us off mm -hmm. from our plan mm -hmm. we cut it off Absolutely. so we'll be starting doing it i'm going to buy one today mm -hmm. i'm already late because it's a new year <laughs> maybe i do it next year <laughs> so stay with positive people who are uh -huh. able to encourage you to empower you to stay in the right direction absolutely and that is the way to go so yes. if, if anyone wants to keep the conversation going how can they reach out on your social media handles actually my social media platforms this theme is still the same samuel getembe on facebook you can reach me on samuel getembe instagram twitter samuel getembe all my social platform is that way and also they can also reach me on uh, my phone okay was, yes i can is give it out yes absolutely yeah 0799432427 0799432427 for those people who want to reach me out for speaking on their public gatherings in church but they, i do speak in churches mm -hmm. i also speak in uh, forums uh, gatherings i also mentor people i do forums and summits to mentor and get many business uh, main businesses i'm also a mentor i'm also actually a coach mm -hmm. i mentor businesses i'm also mentor to people young people who want also to succeed in business so they can be able to reach me also on my email actually if you go to my end social media platform and then you so search Samuel Getembe you can be able to reach me there i can be able to respond to you in time and i can be able to listen to you whatever you want advice for me oh right, that is uh, thank you very much Samuel thank you very thank much. you very much for creating time for oh, people to shake shake no how do you do this on the on the that air. way it's already done <laughs> Thank there you. you go. So yes. thank you very much for creating time to be with us and talking about uh, executing a successful business pivot, different ways you can go about it, and just what matters when it comes to just making changes in your business when they're not doing well. Thank you very much, Samuel. Thank you very much. So there you have it. That is Samuel Getembe, the uh, CEO of B BAE Developers. So make sure you stay tuned. We have so much coming your way right here on Why in the Morning. Remember, if it's Tuesday, it's matters pertaining to entrepreneurship Tuesday. The hashtag to use is hashtag entrepreneurship Tuesday. My name is Michelle Ashira. We'll be right back with so much right here on Why in the Morning. <laughs>